So this happened about three months back, it stuck with me, and I just want to get the whole story off my chest to be honest. I live in a rural area in the northwest coast of Scotland. The scenery is beautiful, with locks and bends, lakes and hills for the non-Scots, right outside my door. The nearest village is about a 15-minute drive away, and only has a few hundred people itself. Other than that there are a few other houses sparsely dotted about, but the closest neighbor is still a mile or two away from me. My house is next to the lock, which I'll fish in from time to time, and a large field which acts as my backyard. The field is then abruptly met with a tree line, which is the entrance to one of the largest wooded areas in Scotland. That's more or less the layout of the gaff. Other than that, it's just me living there. My other half passed away a few years ago, and since then, I fell into a bit of a depression. It was a tough time in my life, but I got through it. Especially after I adopted the wee man, Alfie. Alfie's a border terrier, and acts as my best pal. He goes everywhere with me, and has really been the difference between life and death at times. Because we're so isolated up here, the usual routine is just before bed. About 9 or 10 p.m., I'll open the back door for Alfie to run around the field for a bit to get any last-minute potty breaks in. It's Scotland, so naturally 360 days of the year are freezing. Because of this, I'll shut the door behind him and wait for him to come and scratch the door after to let him in. So this one night, April 25th this year, things were as normal. I was sat watching some rubbish on Netflix, Alfie next to me. The wee man got up and started stretching, so I made a mental note to go and let him out. I finished watching whatever I was watching and went and opened the back door. The night was of course pitch black, and I could just see the outline of the trees in the tree line. I lit up a quick cigarette, bad habit I know, and smoked it quickly before closing the door. I went and did some bits and bobs, closing curtains and doing some dishes, when I heard Alfie scratching away at the door. It had been about 5 or 10 minutes, so I went to go and let him in again. I put the plate I was cleaning down and began walking down the corridor to the back door. I yawned on the way and gave Alfie a rub on the head as I walked past. I thought about having another cigarette, but I gave Alfie a rub on the head. The thought stopped me dead in my tracks. I turned back, and sure enough, Alfie was lying snoozing in the corridor. Weird. I could have sworn I heard him scratching on the door. He must not have gone out when I opened the door, and then I imagined the scratching. I turned around again to head back the way I came, and chills ran down my spine. I heard the scratching again. Now I knew for a fact it wasn't Alfie. He was lying right next to me. I also knew for a fact I hadn't imagined it. I waited a few more seconds, and the scratching persisted. I instantly felt my heart drop to my stomach. I felt queasy. What was scratching at my door? I decided to go upstairs to my bedroom, because I knew I could get a view of the back door and what was at it from that window. I cautiously crept up the stairs, and then slowly pulled the curtains back just enough to peek through. I promise on my grave, this next bit is completely true. I watched in horror as a fully grown man who was perched on all fours began to scratch at my back door again. This sight nearly made me faint. I'm not a small man, and I chop and deliver firewood for a living, so I'm pretty strong, but just pure creepiness of seeing this shook me to my core. I couldn't see his face that well, but I could make out he was maybe 30 to 40 years old and was maybe of Western Asian descent, with brown skin and a scraggly black beard. A point that may be relevant is that my particular area of Scotland is very white, about 99% I think, and everyone knows each other anyway. No one even knows someone of that description in any of the local villages, within 40 or 50 miles. I also could make out a grin on the man's face. It looked like he was trying to stifle it, however, almost like he was excited but was trying to keep himself composed. The scratch noises were indistinguishable from Alfie's, so I immediately knew he must have had long fingernails. He scratched the door a couple more times over the next minute or so. After this, 
he crawled down the three or four stairs back to the back garden and began crawling in circles. This image was even more sickening than the last. A grown man crawling on the floor like a dog. What the actual hell? That was until he burst out into a sprint. He had quickly risen from his crawl and taken the 10 to 15 meters he was away as a run-up. A run-up that charged straight into the back door. I fitted those doors myself, so I trusted the hinges they were built on. And rightly so. The man bounced right off the door, but the sound immediately alerted Alfie. Alfie started barking uncontrollably, and I took this as a chance to say something too. Get out of here, mate. I can see ya. I shouted down. The man didn't even flinch. He just stood up from the floor and brushed himself off. He didn't even look up at me. He then just turned around and walked calmly further into the backyard, further and further until he hit the tree line and still kept walking. The guy had only been wearing a hoodie and dark gray tracksuit bottoms, so he must have been freezing. To then venture off into the dark woods, alone, so carelessly, the whole situation had me equally as confused as it did terrified. I called the local village's police station. They said they'd sent someone out to talk to me. When the officer got here, I told him the story and recounted the man to the best of my abilities. But after I finished recounting the tale, all I got was A. Are ya drinking again? I couldn't believe it. I had a wee bit of an issue a few years back after the death of my wife, but put the booze down and been sober for the last 12 months. He clearly just didn't believe me. Hell, I didn't know if I'd believe me other to be honest. He left, and it was just me and Alfie again. Neither of us slept a wink the rest of the night. I also broke my sobriety for the first time that night, which is not something I'm proud of. And that was that. Didn't hear anything about a body in the woods. Didn't hear anything about a man of that description. Didn't hear anything about the same thing happening to the neighbors. I couldn't believe it. The more I went over it in my head, the more it began to terrify me. That man must have been watching me and noticed my habit of letting Alfie in when he scratched the door, or however many nights before he tried it himself. Was just lucky Alf decided not to go out that night. The part that really terrifies me is that he never knew I was watching him. So when he crawled down and kept his acting like a dog act facade going, that was just for him. He was acting like that thinking no one was watching. I've spent the past months combing over all the pictures of any escaped mental patients or convicts over the last 20 years, but nothing. It's almost as if the guy, oh god, I hear the scratching again. I hear the scratching at my door again, and Alfie is at my feet. It sounds slower this time, and deeper into the wood of the door. I am gonna go and confront this bum. Wish me luck, I'll update when it's over. Hiya everyone, got a wee update for you all. Thanks for all the lovely comments worrying about mine and Alf's safety. We're okay, for now. Regarding guns, we live in Scotland, so no guns here, unfortunately. So last night was pretty wild. Heard the scratching as I was writing, posted it quickly without thinking, and immediately started panicking. Alfie could sense something was up too. Poor wee guy was stood behind me whining but still giving out defensive barks towards the back door. I questioned what to do for a solid minute or so. Should I really confront him? Screw it. Live by the sword. Die by the sword. Get out of here, ya bum. I shouted through the door to him. I heard nothing but silence. Through the pane glass window of the door though, I could see his figure rise up slowly. I'm guessing he had been on his all fours again, but now standing on just two legs, I could see the true size of this man. He was probably about the same height as the door, maybe 6'6" and his wide frame was noticeable even through the silhouette. Damn, all that bravado out the window now. He lifted his arm back, and I thought he was about to try and smash through the door with punches. But he tapped, tapped so gently on the glass pane it was barely audible. Other than that it was silent. 
the slight buzz of the television and the living room clock ticking were the only sounds present until he broke that silence. Ah, but mister, please let me in, he said in a voice imitating a little girl. It was clearly a grown man's voice, but he had raised his pitch and even put on this slight childish lisp to give the impression he was a child, which he clearly wasn't. I want to go and swim, mister. Get away, mates. Your knee right in the head. Gonna give you to five, and if you're not gone, there's gonna be trouble. Understand? Silence once again. One, two, three. I heard footsteps walking away down the back steps again. Thank God. He's going. That relief was short-lived. That hole in my stomach opened again when I heard him going around the side of the house. And this time, he was running. I instantly panicked. Shoot, had I locked the front door? I sprinted down the corridor to the front door, Alfie at my heels, and turned the key as soon as I got to the front door. Not even a second after the door bolted locked, the handle started jittering. He was trying to open it. He tried five or six times, and when he realized it was locked, I heard this tiny giggling, as if he was just doing it to himself. This game was genuinely funny to him. I waited a few minutes before going to the window by front door. It was, of course, the same man. He just stood there, staring at the door trying to will it open with his eyes or something. That was when he turned, eerily slowly, and looked straight at me through the window. Even though it was dark, I could still make out the crazed look in his eyes. I could see a lot of people theorizing Kelpies or some other Celtic myth creatures, but me chance, this was the crazed look of a man. A man who had lost touch with everything, lost touch with any shred of sanity he had. He then spoke one last line in his childish imitation voice. One last line that stayed with me. I'm going to go and swim with your wife now. What? What the? How did this prick know her? How did he know her name? How did he know? What happened? I was frozen in fear, in anger, in shock. By the time I looked back at the front door, he'd gone. He was calmly walking away the same way he'd done into the forest that night a few months back. He was walking away, this time to the lake. He walked and walked and walked, before walking straight into the dark water. Hey, I know it's summer, but it's Scotland. That water is still freezing, especially at three in the morning. He swam around the corner, a sort of breaststroke, and I didn't see him again. I sat there, me and Alf, shaken to my core once again. What the actual hell? That last comment, who was this man? I took myself off to bed, in a zombie-like state, and woke up this morning in a daze. Surprise, I even got some sleep last night. Who was this man? Why had he been trying to get into my house? What did he want? How did he know my poor late wife? So many questions. So there I was this morning, lying in bed with Alf reading through Reddit when I fancied some coffee to start the day. I went downstairs to the kitchen, and you can imagine my horror when the kitchen floor was covered in water. Water, that was clearly from the lake outside, 